right, I've got Alex Bass of Cyberbytes Inc., Brandon Orr, Scott McCarthy over from BB Central, and we got Blaze's Crackberry, editor in chief, in the house as well. How are all you gentlemen doing tonight? Excellent. Doing Great. good. Doing good. Great. If there's audio issues, please tweet Alex H. Bass on Twitter with any of your complaints. Uh, it, we're trying up a new little setup on the live show piece here to get, again, better quality audio for all of our listeners like you. So hopefully that works. We have an interesting week of topics that are, I, I want to kind of go through. I think one of the biggest pieces that we have to start the week out is really BlackBerry's brand new enterprise portfolio, this new platform that they've delivered on. And it's a really interesting cohesive mobile platform that basically takes all their recent acquisitions and rolls them up into one service releasing a consolidation of good um, encryption ad hoc and all the other assets that they have which is pretty cool alongside this we're getting rollouts for the december beta updates across dtech dtex 50 and 60 as well as priv on at&t which i'm glad that finally got an update blackberry even acknowledged officially the release of 10.3.3 and the NIAP certification that comes along with it. And in about nine days on the 20th, BlackBerry will have their earnings call for Q3 of fiscal 2017. And we'll talk about some other little news like me back on a BlackBerry Passport Silver Edition and absolutely loving it. So guys, what was some of the news this week that really stuck out for you? So I'll go first. I guess it was the the change to the new enterprise yeah. system. Um, that was <laughs> I was kind of surprised with that, just because they had, you know, spent so much effort um, before creating Bez. But I can kind of see why it's going on because they're really trying to consolidate all the different acquisitions they've made over the past few years and pretty and pretty much bring them under one roof uh, to create one platform instead of having you know a separate. Uh, good offering that was under uh, under the BlackBerry logo. It's more just going to be integrated into one enterprise offering. So I can see how it's going. It's going to be a lot more streamlined for the end user and the consumer. So it makes sense to do that. And it's, it's I think that's that's an important step that they need to take with these acquisitions. Yeah, can I just say that the, the logo redesigns that they did or the, the application redesigns, I think they look really nice. Um, something about BlackBerry, they don't always have the best designs for things, but I thought they were very sleek. They all, you know, integrate well together and the color scheme that they're using, because just from the design perspective, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, excited about them. It's very cohesive and it seems like they're finally getting their shit together. Um, so it's a little bit exciting. Well, cool. so Alex is all excited yeah. about icons, and I'm just excited about the platform. <laughs> <laughs> Finally getting everything together and basically having a nice comprehensive package to be able to go ahead and take to people is, I don't know, I mean, arguably, it's something that has been in the works for a long while, but basically they're renaming everything, getting everything, getting everything all grouped together and, you know, presenting a nice package. And I guess, Alex, icons is part of that, I mean... You want to have stuff looking fresh and tip top, so <laughs> yeah. It just it shows like a seriousness, I think. Um, when when they actually like, you could tell that it wasn't just like thrown together quickly, um, and that, that it makes me feel like they're they're being serious. So I feel like rather than just the design, I personally take it as a more you know they're taking this entire approach more seriously, just from that redesign. But that's just kind of my opinion. One of the things I thought was really really interesting is. It, it's a telling point as we end this quarter what BlackBerry's doing. And Blaze and I were speaking on BBM, and it's non-news, right? It's not even anything. It's like this is the same stuff they've had. They've now just, like Alex said, put a fresh coat of paint on it and, and, and renamed it all. But I think the impactful piece is that they've named it BlackBerry. And I think that's important for the future of where BlackBerry software initiative is going to take them because they're not hiding behind good. They're not hiding behind their acquisitions anymore. They're now taking these acquisitions and now they're saying we're in control of where this is going to go from here on out. We're not a patchwork. Now we're a platform. And I think that's super important for where BlackBerry is going to take things. It also kind of tells all of us, right, like what's going to happen and what do we have to look forward to? Well, it's advancements in these new things that they've just put out, right, and, and rebranded and retooled. I think it's really, really cool that it is unified across the board and that BlackBerry is at the center of it. Because at the end of the day, I've seen people on good 
and it says good for work by blackberry right so it's it's such a convoluted way of trying to say who you are and what you support and with this it's right up there in front another really interesting piece is that there's been a good app called good work and now there's a blackberry work app and alex and i were talking about this over a bbm voice call which does work on bb10 cross-platform guys so that still works right uh it is is that bbm work is almost like samsung focus in the sense that it basically brings your emails your calendars your ims your contacts in a, like a mini app store and a bunch of other things into one application into one kind of a silo and what's cool about that is we don't know what the status of any blackberry hub on ios is but they've basically built something very very close in functionality to that with this app so I guess now we talk about availability, right? With all of these apps, is it going to remain all an enterprise thing or will there be kind of build down solutions that do reach, you know, general people who want to use these services? For instance, BBM Protected, right? We could all go out and pick up BBM Protected, but it's really, really strictly an enterprise thing as well. So the board is really opening up for BlackBerry right now, and I'm just excited to see where they're going to take things next because the potential is now that they have a focus and it's all under one umbrella and a BlackBerry umbrella and that. There's what do actually, you guys think about? There's actually a lot of the, uh, although we didn't actually cover it because of the fact that we, we included a few of the videos in the actual press announcement and stuff like that with like the the BlackBerry What's Coming video and uh, BlackBerry work itself, but redefining the mobile experience. But if you actually look on onto the BlackBerry YouTube channel, you can get a better sense of what it is that they're working with in terms of iOS anyways, because they uploaded a bunch of the tutorials uh, basically three days ago when the announcement came through, which sort of shows off some of the, the stuff that we're talking about right now. Like it shows uh, the BlackBerry Dynamics Launcher, it shows the BlackBerry Work Calendar and the BlackBerry Work Contacts and how you can essentially sync your contacts and VIP notifications and stuff like that. So um basically if you if anybody listening is actually interested in seeing what some of that stuff looks like um the stuff is there to be able to go ahead and view it right now like you don't need an enterprise server or anything like that to essentially be able to go ahead and watch the videos so you can just go over to the blackberry youtube channel and you'll see all of the uploads that came from essentially three days ago just watch some of those tutorials and you'll get a get an idea of what it is going to look like, essentially on iOS at least, uh, because for whatever reason, all the tutorials are right now iOS based, which it's kind of odd. They're not even they're not even Android based or anything. But. Well, so is this as close as we're going to get to the hub on on iOS? Is this what they meant when they when they said the hub, or it, you know, essentially BlackBerry suite of apps? I know this is more enterprise focused, but could this maybe be all they're going to be doing on iOS from that front? I think this is more of what it turned into versus mm -hmm. what they initially had planned. Yep. I think they, they probably had the hub as we know it planned, but this is what it, it turned itself into. And this is, this is how people are going to be. <laughs> this is, this is easier, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because you know, they basically purchased all the assets for it and they have everything already for it. All it did is require essential name changes and you know, everything is, is already there and you know, whatever improvements that they wish to add from here on out, all of the baseline stuff is already there and included and, you know, ready to rock and roll. So uh, from a, from a, a development perspective, it just makes sense to to push this more so than Hub, probably. Because again, we don't know what the actual limitations are of of Hub on iOS. Like we know what the limitations are of Hub on i on Android because they pushed it and they released it, and maybe it's not necessarily on par with what they had expected. Uh, you know the capabilities to be, um, but you know. This is what what this is essentially what we had to work with right now, and you know for for a lot of folks this stuff isn't even necessarily going to mean anything because you know you're just simply not in the enterprise space or anything like that. So um, while I would still love to see BlackBerry Hub come to iOS, I don't know if that's actually going to happen in the traditional sense that we know it on Android because you know BlackBerry's not out there making iOS devices, they're out there making Android devices, and that's 
that's kind of it, right? Yeah, and I don't even realistically think that they can make, say, the hub on iOS. I think iOS is too right. locked down. So Right. They kind of need their own siloed off system, kind of like this is, where they have the container apps and everything else to, yeah. to go alongside with it. You know when you take your dog to the park, and I don't have a dog, but just as a preface, right? If you, when you, when you take your dog to the park and, you know, there's a little pond and your dog's having fun and it's running through, getting a little wet, and then it gets out of the water and it just, like, shakes all the water off and then comes back to you, that's what Blackbird just did. <laughs> that's really what they did. They just kind of refreshed themselves, took a dive, came back out refreshed. Blackberry UEM is now replacing BlackBerry's Bez 12. And I think that's another important thing. As part of this transition and, and part of where they're taking their software initiative, the fact that they've taken the Bez 12 name and retired it and now are going with BlackBerry UEM, which stands for Unified Endpoint Management, you really see that they're looking at a broader o IoT picture here. And now it's not just about a, a BlackBerry 10 device or an Android device or even an iPhone device. It's now about all the endpoints. We're talking laptops, Mac, Windows 10, wearables, IoT devices. If you boil it down, you peel it back, and you think, like, well, how does BlackBerry UEM play into BlackBerry Radar? You start seeing a lot of connections that can be drawn between their IoT assets and now their management assets. And the scalability here is what's going to be huge for them. What do you guys think about the retiring Bez 12? I, I personally think it kind of goes in cadence with moving away from some of the old uh, monikers that kind of had maybe a negative sentiment or maybe not the best sentiment. Maybe you think Bez 12 and you think like, oh, that's that thing we used five years ago, whereas UEM is now this new, brand new the platform that manages all your endpoints. Do you think it was a good move to move away from the Bez name and kind of refresh that? Or do you think that's something that may hurt them down the line? I, oh, I think it was a good yeah. move. <laughs> Yeah, I think it, you think of Buzz and it's kind of just like the old way that BlackBerry used to do it. Just like, you know, Biz and Buzz and that was like old BlackBerry. And for some reason, you know, I, in my mind, it's like Buzz feels so outdated to me. And the name BlackBerry can be like more reinvigorating. So like, you know, BlackBerry work tied with um, UEM. Like it's just, it for me, it's kind of like a new influx of like new, you know, life into the company from just looking at it from the outside in. I personally think it's a good idea because <clears throat> it just shows that the company is more about just phones now, right? And that's one of the key things. And Bez was completely tied to, you know, handheld devices, whereas mm -hmm. the company wants to go into the, the all the uh, IoT stuff, right? So get away from Bez, and now we got a central software that could potentially tap into all that different things. I think is absolutely critical to move away from Bez. And, and just like you said, James, it's all about the negative sentiments that still stick around, right? And it's time for for BlackBerry to try to ditch as much as possible. And actually in BlackBerry Central, we're having a BBM chat and wondering if the BlackBerry name should should almost be retired itself because it's so bad, the sentiments to it. But maybe that's something John Chen can, you know, turn hopefully turn around. But piece by piece, uh, definitely trying to get get rid of those negative sentiments that have been latched to the company. The Rottweilers and Pitbulls just won't let go of, right? Yeah, so. I think... With the BlackBerry name, I think that's a really interesting question because they're kind of stuck with it now, right? After ditching research in motion. And I think, you know, you can you could put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig, right? I can rename my yeah. child to, you know, from Charlie to Sam. But either way, it's it's a unisex name and it doesn't matter, right? So I, it's interesting because I think John Shen has less to do with the clout of the BlackBerry name than you and I do. I think we the users have more to say about what the BlackBerry brand means today than, than BlackBerry does in a lot of senses. It's it's who's using these products and services and, and are they working for those people? And I think if we all can kind of get together and speak more to the viability of what BlackBerry is doing for secure mobility, I think that's a huge thing we all can contribute to. And it starts with us. I mean, I'm literally at, at the juice box down the road the other day getting a smoothie, right? And I put my Passport SE I'm sorry, guys. I, it's so pretty. Anyway, I put my passport <laughs> SE. I put my passport SE down on a, on the the register, and uh, I see the guy like texting on his iPhone 
I don't say anything because the passport speaks for itself. I don't have to say anything. I just have to purposely put it there, right? And he says, what is that? Is that the new BlackBerry? I'm like, actually, this is the old BlackBerry from two years ago, right? Give or take, right? Because Passport SE is not, not that old per se. But this is actually the old BlackBerry. And he's like, can I try it out? And I'm like, yeah. And, uh, you know, he picked it up and he's like, oh, man, this thing is wide. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, that's the point. And I, I literally lean over and just slide my finger up on the screen and it, like, comes to life for him. And he's like, whoa. And then I'm like, yeah, type something out. And he swipes his fingers across the keyboard and it goes obviously to the next uh, page in the app screen. And he's like, whoa. And and he just, it was lost in it for about 20 minutes. And I'm answering all these questions and he's like, what's your website? Like, tell me all about this. Do you sell these? And I'm like, well, I do have a red one, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell that one. Right. So <laughs> really, really powerful stuff. And if you check out Barry Flow in our blog section, I did up a, a little mini review of 10.3.3 on the SE and just how darn good it is. And this is a conversation I think all of us can have because we've all experienced different operating systems. I think right now in our cast, I'm the only one on a BB10 device, and that's kind of a change of pace. It's always one of us, right? Like Brandon's on it, I'm on it, or mm-hmm. Alex is I, never on it because, you know, screw up. I got a classic but, uh, for work that but, I run with. So you're you're dual devising. That's that's interesting, Scott. Yeah, well, work won't let me uh, do BYOB, nor let me use my device to the full potential. So that's kind of stuck. That's that's awesome. You get to use two BlackBerry devices, and like you you get to obviously see the pros and cons like right at your fingertips between the yeah, two. Yeah, uh, it's every day, man. <laughs> so I was just, and maybe you you agree with this, but I feel like. Android is so large that its its reach exceeds its grasp almost in terms of focus. Like it does a lot of things well, but nothing spectacularly. It, you know? there's, yeah, you you said it right. Android, even even BlackBerry and Android is not focused. Like it, 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 there's all kinds of little things, but there's no like streamline to it so that you can like okay, this feeds that feeds this, and I get the end result which I'm looking for. Unlike BB10 where. OS was the hub. As soon as you realize that, so, but yeah, it's it's pretty neat day in day out flipping between two devices, two OSs, sometimes. Other times, I might try that. Critically right frustrating. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it can definitely get frustrating. But the thing is, like, if the passport was smaller, I'd say you know, let me dual wield another phone. But it's just so large already, and so much of a phone that it's. It's just hard. It's like a, I'm not a, a large person per se, and I just I might have to like chain these things. Like I'm gonna wear my passport around my neck or something like that. We'll just solder some chains around, and I'll just walk around like that. But I think if someone right now is looking at what a phone is worth, and and what your money is actually going toward. I look at BB10 and I look at Android and I look at all the options, right? I look at the OnePlus 3T, I look at the Pixel, I look at the S7 Edge, I look at the iPhone 7 Plus, I look at the DTEK 60, and I look at all these options that are out there and it's like, DTEK 60 is a great bang for your buck. It really is because you get everything you want on Android and, and more or less everything you'd want from BlackBerry, right? Not down to the wire, but you get a lot of it. And then you look at the cost of an iPhone or a Pixel or some of these Samsung devices and then you look at a, a passport or even a priv, and just the cost is so much lower. And you still get a darn good device from that. It's just really, really hard to make that delineation between is the four hundred dollar premium I'm gonna pay for this device worth the four or five or six apps that I may be using, right? And for some people, that's absolutely true. What I think really is that BlackBerry now has a fork in this offering, right? They're able to say, Okay, I've got I've got customers that I can service who want Android. They want apps. I can service them. I also have customers in the regulated industry who want again that streamlined, secure productivity powerhouse, and they have that with BB10, and they're going to keep maintaining it. I think 10.3.3 from a user perspective really just brings new life and keeps the OS solid for another year. And maybe 10.3.4 is kind of the last, uh, you know update that they do but i think that's super super good of them to continue to put out the uh, the os in, in the way they do um i'm seriously impressed coming back to this it's like i went to the device looking to see something new and i didn't find anything new i found something old and it was really nice to go back to something so familiar 
Brandon, when you kind of went yeah. back and forth with the priv issues, how was that for you? <clears throat> it was actually kind of similar to your experience. It felt like a, a breath of fresh air going back. Um, I feel like I've been using Android, and it does an adequate job for what it is. It, I mean, it has everything there. I just felt that the intuitiveness and my general workflow on the Priv uh, and Android in general just isn't as good as it was on BlackBerry 10. So even though I was going back to BlackBerry 10, I was giving up uh, some of these applications. I actually felt more comfortable using it. Uh, even without those applications that I was missing that I like, uh, just because I felt like all the other aspects of it were uh, made up for it. They, so like the messaging and the hub and everything is just so fluid and it's so seamless that it's easy. It's just easy to do things, get those messages out and, and receive messages and, and search stuff on the device and use the file manager. It's just so easy and quick on the passport. Whereas on the priv, it's just... Uh, in Android in general, it just feels a bit clunky, not as intuitive. And and even though I have all these features on the Android, I just I just feel like it's it, I just don't feel as comfortable using it as I did on my BlackBerry 10. And that might just be because I was using BlackBerry 10 for for three years there. Um, I grew accustomed to it, but I don't know. I've got half a year later on my Android device, and I, I'm still not super accustomed to and in, in getting into the workflow. And going back to the password was just a great experience. And and I and I know actually, actually I'm kind of thinking of maybe going back to the passport for a little while longer now. Do it, do it. I'm telling you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put out some cheat sheets on how to make this phone work as good as it can. I mean, it's tough. Like Instagram APK works, but not the latest version. But I have the latest version that does work, right? So there's a, a bunch of situations like that. Like you can get Facebook working. You just gotta know which service to go get or which bar file to go load and yeah it's work it, it's it's not alx files right blaze it's not as uh, fun as it used to be no. but uh hmm. you can do you can do it right and crackberry is a great resource to go figure out what some of those things are right i can get patched apps from there that i don't have to do any work to get working right i can get google photos and all these crazy other things and bb10 is still rocking it's still kicking and i'm just amazed every day by the the simple things that they nailed two or three two or three years ago that these flagship devices are just kind of coming around to now like on my s7 edge when i took a photo it would take a little video pre and post and it's wow i've been doing that on bb10 since 2013 with time shift it's like great you finally got that on your os right but i've had that i've had these features and then i look at just the the totally messed up notification system on android where you could swipe something away and literally never see it again right you got to go yeah. back into that app and, and trace it down and it's just awful for like work hub that's, is such a nice a nice additive to that end right on android yeah that's another Step thing down. i i noticed when i went back to the passport is i would get notifications and i actually brandon's choppy shot it sounds like he just like muted himself yeah, I think we lost him. <laughs> yeah, he's probably gonna croak out and disappear in a second. <laughs> Jeez, he's like mid right now too on his on his snapshot. <laughs> yeah, some screenshot. Know, James, Matt. Just screenshot. Speaking, screenshot. Speaking your simplicity there, James. Like, um, I'm in Arizona now. My stepdad came and picked me up and took me to the airport and everything like that. Right. And we were having a conversation. We always we always end up having that, you know, where does BlackBerry stand at the present moment conversation when we're, you know, two guys driving alone together. He always just wants to keep track of things. And, um, you know, I gave him the rundown of how things are and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do if BlackBerry ever stops making, like, BlackBerry 10 phones or, like, just, like, a basic work device. And I was like, well, what do you like about your BlackBerry 10 phone? He's like, it's just business. That's all I do on my phone. He was like, I don't need apps. I don't need games. I don't need any of that crap. He goes, I tried to use, he had a Nexus, um, uh, Nexus 6 at some point. He was like, I tried to use that phone. I really did. He was like, I went out, I bought it. It was brand new. Got it on Telus, blah, 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 blah. Used it for three weeks, and then I went back to my passport, which he didn't really want to go back to his passport. But once he got back on his passport, he's like, I probably just need to buy another passport because his passport was broke, right? 
And um, yeah, he ended up basically just buying another passport because everything else in the world does not suit his needs. He just needs a basic phone with some smartphone functionality like email and SMS and a web browser and, you know, the capability to view PDF files and, you know, Microsoft Word documents and stuff like that. And that was what he, he likes about BlackBerry 10 is because he doesn't need any of that additional crap. And he just wants it for business. And he doesn't, he's one of the, 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 the niche people who were like, when you take BlackBerry 10 away from him, He's not going to know what to do because he doesn't need any of the other crap in his life. He just wants that basic smartphone functionality that BlackBerry 10 fulfills him with. Yeah, and I think that's what we've always kind of come back to, that what BlackBerry 10 did so well is that it did the main basic functionality of a smartphone you know, better than anyone else. At a yeah. core level, you, you, un, you take the thing out of the box and it's working how you need it. It has you know, the file manager. It has the hub for email. You don't need anything else installed on it. Whereas you get an Android phone, especially if you get like a Samsung device, and there's so many, sometimes you get duplicates of apps. There's just so many things that you don't even really need to know. I'm trying to get my buddy, you know, a proper contacts app and on his phone, and it's just like kind of a mess. It's like, well, which, which one of these 10 should we use, you know? And I think that's the confusion that happens. Some people just want to be able to use their mm -hmm. phone. Um, but then when you start in introducing things like Snapchat and social media into the mix, that's where things get complicated. But your dad's not going to be on Snapchat. He's probably not using Instagram like crazy. There are some BlackBerry 10 apps for Instagram, for instance. But at the same time, it just does what a core smartphone needs to do, and it does it well. I think that is the argument for licensing it, too, because it does the basic smartphone so well in these emerging markets where, again, Android is an option. If they want that, they can get it. But if you want to sell a feature phone that is like rock solid, the OS and that beater phone will go for days and days and days, well, years and years and years, right? BB10 would be an easy option for someone to license, slap a couple of their own carrier or whatever apps on it and, and go for it, right? And they get to build a custom experience for their users. And it's just so solid. I think QNX on mobile has a potential that BlackBerry doesn't yet really know what to do with. And I don't know if it's a licensing thing or an advancement into different IoT peripherals that they want to do. So, you know, licensing it to Samsung to do smart devices or something. We don't know. And I don't think BlackBerry does. And the time will come, right? IoT is coming. This is a, a real thing. And I think the enterprise of things as well is something that's coming. And a lot more of that to come as well. As BlackBerry's trajectory becomes more clear, we look closer to our earnings on December 20th. Alex, cue up our Patreon audio, if you would, please. And while Alex is doing that, Brandon dipped off because there's a blizzard hitting Toronto right now, and he briefly lost power. Oh, so he'll just jump back on in our after show. But uh, we've solicited some Patreon questions, and we found one really, really well that fit with the tone of our conversation today. So, Alex, get that queued up, and I will send it here in, uh, in the chat for our group as well, here in the Skype. All right. I'm starting the playback now. Hello, everybody. This is Rico from Spain. First of all, a big shout out to Blaze, Alex, and James. You guys are doing a hell of a job on Clark, Clark Berry and on Berry Flow. You guys are really pushing it through. Uh, listen, my question for today is the following. With the new rebranded security enterprise strategy that is about to be launched, think about it. Is it really necessary to continue with devices? It is clear BlackBerry is an expert in software, but not really on hardware lately. So do we really need a DTIC 70 or just get better improvements on software? You know, I'd rather have the best software and then I can select it on what device I want it, but I know that software is from BlackBerry. What do you guys think? All right, guys, take care. And uh, hopefully we'll do one day uh, a show from Spain and Madrid later. This Yeah, so um, you know, definitely an interesting question. I think James and I had a good discussion about it recently about you know BlackBerry, the name BlackBerry, and really they want to be that name in security. Um, and hardware is just kind of this, this you know, thing that they're in right now, but in terms of BlackBerry as a brand, they want you to think BlackBerry, and that just you know, coincides with security. You know, what, what do you guys take from this, this question? 
It's definitely an interesting one. It, it, the question is, in summation, is do we really need a DTEK 70 or should they just focus on software? And I think, in a way, the DTEK 7, the Mercury DTEK 70, this upcoming quarterly device, I think BlackBerry, from a security and software perspective, can showcase their innovation, can showcase their enterprise strategy through the hardware and be able to actually go ahead and speak on what they can do on hardware. So I think in a way for them to tell their software story, they continue they continually will need devices like the DTEK 70 to showcase them pushing the edge of what security and mobility really means. So I think it's something that's going to be very very interesting. I definitely think a DTEK 70 needs to come even if it's just fan service. But I think longer term, yeah, software is going to be really where it's at for them like i don't see a true need for a device i think we need better partnerships with other odms building other devices and maybe pre-installing blackberry apps and and that's the play right ultimately they want recurring revenue and i don't think a handset really does that for them especially when you buy all the services kind of right out of the box what do you think scott do you think software is more important than hardware at this point for blackberry or they should continue putting out devices i, I think you kind of hit uh hit the point a bit in that <clears throat> to showcase their software, you kind of need the hardware because without software, the hardware is nothing, right? It's just a brick sitting on a desk. Um, and I think BlackBerry still hasn't completely solidified their name in, in the Android uh, space yet. So the DTEK 70 or Mercury, well, God, whatever it's going to be called, is just a way for them to finalize uh, getting their getting their name out there. And it kind of ends the story, right? Potentially. In that, here we go, and... Uh, this is the last thing built in house, and BlackBerry kind of closes that chapter of, of their book and moves on to the complete outsourcing. So allow them to, you know, kind of put the wounds to to bed per se. Right. So yeah, it, it's needed. I think I think it's needed, and I, I think uh, more importantly, it's it's needed because John Chen said it was going to come, and John Chen's a man of his word from what I what I take. So if he says, yeah, it's coming. Unless it's like something ridiculously impossible that will sink the company, he's going to do it because he wants to show the world that he's a man of action and he's just not saying words for the sake of saying words. And, and I think, you know, I had mentioned the thing about black brand security. Maybe it doesn't make too much sense related to the question, but at the same time, this is what I'm kind of feeling that. You know, software is going to be what BlackBerry is going to be doing, and it's going to be very security focused. Hardware is a good way for them to kind of get the brand name out there. Otherwise, just being the security layer within a bunch of different hardware, you know, there's no brand recognition you're really getting with that. Whereas releasing a phone that says, we are the secure phone, just like black phone, like we are the secure phone, then that allows them to get some brand recognition and build up that brand and, you know, make BlackBerry and security go synonymous with each other. So I think phones will always be a, a smart part to them, but it's more just kind of an investment in their brand and how people perceive them. Yeah, absolutely. Make BlackBerry great again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's funny because it's like BlackBerry's been great. It's now market. I'm just sorry. We, we got to end it there, guys. Let's jump over to our after show. This is a really great discussion, guys. I want to keep it right around this time frame. Rico, thank you so much for your question. We solicit Patreon questions on a private BBM channel, and then we reach out over BBM and actually collaborate on that audio piece that you just heard played. So we're going to continue doing that little segment. Absolutely. All right, Alex. Yeah. All right, guys. See you in the Take after us. Show. Oh. 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 What? Yeah. So Something I, I want to thank our patrons for as well is that if Alex sounds less weird on, on this podcast, it's because you all were able to supply him with a new microphone. So thank you for your continued contributions. Uh, it goes to, again, uh, beefing up the squad. Look at that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful condensed Alex, microphone. Alex still sounds weird, but his audio is much better. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. Right on, right on that. <laughs> Time to move over. Go, we will see you guys. go buy a Passport Silver Edition. <laughs> that too. All right. See you guys in the after show. Later. <laughs>